I hit this one right at that flag. <laughs> Hug the line. Oh, that's a great swing. <laughs> At more distance, too. So 168 over that one. Ball speed 115. There we go. Yeah. 0.4 inside to out. One point. There's, there's my draw right there, isn't it? Exactly. That's exactly what we're looking for. We're obviously concerned about shot distance, Jerry, of course, but this number here is probably even more important. What is our carry distance? Right. And when we're working on the simulator, it, gets, it takes into factor that there's no wind. It's a controlled condition, controlled environment, which really makes this number very, very accurate for us. All right, right down that 300 marker. Seven iron should get there, no problem. All right. That's a good swing. She's still turning over a little bit too much for me there, though. It's good flight. Instant feedback on the trajectory. That's what I like. All right, so that shot. Give, I mean, give me an idea. Why would that thing turn over so much? Well, the instant feedback that you're getting from the club in terms of how much it's turning over at the bottom and how much curvature you're getting in the golf ball, I mean, our printout is giving that to us right away right here. I mean, a 3.2 inside to out and closed. That, that club face is rotating quite a bit right there. Yeah, great indication that you're still just a little bit back and maybe a little bit out of posture there coming through, having to help the golf club. So we get a lot of that face rotation and a lot of spin. Yeah, that's more spin than the last one, that's for sure. All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to try and put these nice pretty blades in play. So I'm going to hit the clubs I used last year first. And I'm going to aim them both at that 300 marker so we get the same kind of directional numbers. So we should get some instant feedback on what this club as a baseline. That was a pretty good swing. That was a really good swing. I like that one. 165 with there. 114 ball speed. Great. Good trajectory up there. Now I'm going to take my new Cleveland blade. Same spot, right at that 300 marker. Oh, it feels better. I want it to be farther. Come on. <laughs> now what happened there? We had a lower trajectory, lower ball speed. You got a little bit more curvature from right to left. So that, you know, when you, you can take a look at the spin there. Is way up, probably compared to the first one. Right. So really telling us that maybe you're back again on the swing, a little bit back, stuck back, out of posture, and having to flip this club just a little bit. So ball's coming up a little shorter distance there, and it's got a lot more curvature from right to left. All right. Really good. There you go. Great job. Right back up. Yeah, excellent. Trajectory up. Ball speed's up. That's nice. Yeah, it's nice to be able to get that uh, instant information or feedback from uh, not only the numbers, but the equipment telling us uh, what's going on there. Right. I mean, spin rates are key. Distance is one thing, but spin rates are key. You don't want that ball spinning off the green when you fit a great shot. you got to know the trajectory because you got to get it over whatever tree you're going to be behind. <laughs> and our carry distance, ultimately <laughs> the most important. Yeah. We've got a bit of a flip in that one. I could feel it kind of back on my right leg. It's got to give us some feedback. Ball speed 143. Ball speed's way down. Trajectory's way down. Telling us that the golf club's closing really quickly. Right. right. And I'm backing away again. So that seems to be the biggest thing. So as you're going through the ball now, lower body and your upper, your torso, right. going to go and go ahead and rotate at the same time. Okay? Uh... So your lower will go to this our line of intention, yeah. and your upper will keep on turning through, going back. That's the idea. There we go. Really good. Really good. Well, we got some action through. That should be a big jump in speed. Uh, 149. Uh, five miles an hour. Good. I mean, five miles right an hour. And five miles an hour in one swing. That's it. Great. I could feel like I stood up on that one again. Yeah, just a back away in your chest again. Right. So that chest stays out and over. 
And you have to get that set up by the resistance on the backswing. Right. That's where that comes from, okay? It's still up to 152, though. Yeah. But we've got that horizontal spin, so yep. that's why that thing started hooking a little bit. I'm going to actually uh, bring the new club in. And get a little comparison shopping here. Still just a hair off balance, but I think that one, 153, so lower trajectory, higher ball speed. That carry distance was up there. Even at a lower trajectory, the carry distance was up. So if I tee this one just a little bit higher, Yeah. Close. It's Close. much closer. Yeah. Get up. There you go. <laughs> good job. All right. Really good. 155. Better. 266 carry. All right. I'm getting it past the ladies' tees now. That's a good thing. Good. Club speed. That's, that's a higher club speed, too, getting up to the 111. Yeah, these numbers are telling us that that new driver is acting just what we want it to act, right? Right. And launches, even though it's a deeper face, you got it launching high enough, spin rate is down, um, carry distance is longer, total distance is longer. So well, when we've got a launch angle of 15 yeah. at 26, right. I mean, that ball is going. Yep. That's exactly what we're after. Good. Okay, guys, you've just been hitting some balls and, uh, and seeing you work within the system and within the simulator. Uh, how does it work for you? Well, the thing for me is the instant feedback that this HD Golf Simulator gives me to be able to switch back and forth between clubs that I'm trying out. I know how a ball is supposed to shape. I know what it feels like when, I'm, when I shape it that way, when I know I shape it that way, and it comes out on the simulator. When it comes to the actual numbers, I let this guy handle that most of the time. You know, for me, from a teaching standpoint, what it does is two huge things. Number one, uh, the numbers are so accurate. Uh, so it gives us a true picture of what's happening. And then secondly, it's in a controlled environment, which is what we really need. Uh, so Jerry's ball's not out there midway getting hit by a gust of wind, and, and so the numbers are really true to what's happening. Equipment. We saw you just a few minutes ago switching back and forth between one driver and the other driver. Well, it gives you, in a controlled environment, club data, speed data, spin launch angle, I mean it gives you anything that you could possibly desire in order to choose between clubs that you're trying out. Then he can show me the differences that the swing can make on trajectory, on speed. Right. I mean when I think I'm, I'm maxing out and he puts me in the correct position and I get another five miles an hour out of my ball speed, yeah that's what I need. <laughs> well that's what we're looking for, there's no question about that. But uh, the great benefit for me teaching is that we're not so focused on exactly what that golf ball did. We can focus a little bit more, especially this time of year for us being here in Wisconsin, uh, what Jerry's working on in his golf swing. Uh, the, the best thing that I love about the HD Golf Simulator is it's so easy that even I can use it. I mean, you've got a guy like Jim here who can figure out every single number that's in there. you know, And then you've got somebody like me who just wants to hit the ball, feel it in the middle, and watch the shape that comes out for the way that I like to feel it. There's nothing simpler. I mean, it, it is just as easy, actually easier, because you're in your own house, to go play around round of golf. Fantastic. Tell me how you practiced on the HD Golf Simulator using PGA National Golf Course before playing on the Classic. That was one of the coolest moments I had on this simulator. Uh, just to be able to actually pick out my lines off the tee from the high resolution you get on the HD Golf. I mean, I could, I could pick out the sides of the trees, the branches of the tree that I wanted to aim it and shape it off of. I mean, you can sit down there with your coach and you can actually go through course management strategies, trying to figure out how to play it. Because the shapes of the fairways, the bunkers, everything that you see is exactly like the way you're going to see it at the golf course.
Yeah, it's so realistic. It, you know, that accompanied with the great numbers and the great feedback we're getting makes it really easy for, for us to figure out a game plan to play a golf course. Yeah, HD golf, uh, from my standpoint as an instructor, makes golf an easy game. Uh, we can learn fast. There, you've expedited the learning process is what you've done. Um, there's such accurate feedback, whether it's uh, us on the force plate or whether we're looking at the club head coming through open or closed or whatever we might be looking at. And the way you've formatted the numbers to learn from makes it so simple uh, to learn the game of golf and to learn an efficient golf swing. And, uh, uh, you know, Jerry's no exception to that rule. Right. Now, the fun thing is the, uh, even the swing dynamics. I mean, to be able to see, you know, through the instruction as well, you know, where I'm throwing the speed of the club away and if I can hold that speed all the way down to the bottom of the swing. I mean, it gives such great shaft data that you can go not only between club head speed and ball speed coming off a certain head, but then you can put the different shafts in there and find out, okay, the weaker I go sometimes gives me more kick, but then it's going to give me more spin and it's not going to be as accurate. So, I mean, you can really dial things in to a nth degree. Well, you know, they, they use that term, seeing is believing. And so when you get on this force plate, um, you know, seeing is believing. You know, I can tell Jerry, boy, you look like you're a little bit hanging to the right. And, no, no, I'm not. No, we'll just look on the screen over here <laughs> that uh, they've got for you, and you are. You know, it's not only so accurate, but uh, we're using some forces. We're using gravity. We're trying to, to use some leverage on the ground as Jerry comes through to create some more club head speed. And uh, uh, this is the cutting edge stuff. This is way, way ahead. And uh, it's invaluable information to increase uh, club head speed, whether it's just a couple miles an hour of what you're looking for. You're splitting hairs. And, uh, this so to be able to get that kind of feedback from a machine like this, I mean, the numbers are dead on. So, I mean, just, uh, just one of the first places that I see that my feel is totally different is when I'm taking it back and I get to this position that I feel like I'm going to in the back, and I'm doing a pretty good job of it. And then immediately I get past halfway back, and now I can see how coming out of it brings me to my toes, which I would have thought I would have had to go forward and over right. to bring me to my toes but no coming out of it actually brings me to the toe and I can see myself coming out but I still would have thought something different on the force plate. Yeah and this is where HD's done a great job with all the tools that they have on a, on a screen like this along with the scientific data and the video right next to it um, you get to dispel a lot of, of things that you're feeling and um, and really move on and make some serious progress toward what you do and and this is where as a teacher um, we talk about exaggerating. You have to exaggerate something to really make, you know, an inch of headway. And, and all this information that we're looking at right here does just that. Yeah, it, it definitely shows me that uh, I've got a lot of work to do this winter. <laughs>